Stella Marcelli speaks to me, the Calgary edition. I'm here at Shonare Studios. I'm here with uh, a beautiful lady who has made this space beautiful by a creative uh, genius. She's kind of work, you know, she's put into this community, you know, working with silver, uh, bones, and copper. We're goldsmiths. And goldsmith. We are goldsmiths that work in every medium be with, from paper to platinum. Lovely. Yeah. Hi, Shona. How are you? Good. So, Shona, walk us through how you do your work here. Okay. So, this is what I call my construction bench. Okay. This is where I cut, saw, um, my work and manipulate metals. Okay. Okay. Whether it be silver or gold or bronze or platinum. Okay. Whatever. Right. And then. Let's go. See. Uh, this is where we solder our metals. So we use fire okay. to melt the metals together. Right. Right? So this is where we construct uh, or do our soldering. This is our hammer bench okay. and just our figuring stuff out bench, our rolling mill, our, I mean, there's a lot to doing what we do. A lot of process goes in yeah. that. And then I have a carving bench here where I carve, a, like in particular, I do a lot of carving, wow. right? So a bone or wood or whatever, natural materials. Okay. Uh, this is uh, where my students and my assistants work. Okay. And uh, we have a polishing machine, we have hammers, and as you can see, Stephanie is sawing and creating images in the metal, with the metal. So uh, if uh, someone is interested in becoming a goldsmith or silversmith, so what is the procedure, the process of coming to you know, learn from you? Uh, we teach goldsmith techniques here. Silversmithing is the making of vessels, oh, okay. just so you know. All right. And so we don't do that in this okay. studio. And, uh, but uh, people come and they learn from me. It's basically kind of one-on-one -on -one instruction. I have classes, but they, it's self-directed. For instance, Barb is part of my self-directed studies group. And they come and they learn at their, what they want to learn from me, and then they work here. So typically, how long, for example, if I want to learn about Goldsmith, how long will it take me? If you could do it full time, I would say three to five years. Wow. That's full a long time. time. Wow. And, uh, but, you know, some people just putter away for years at a time. And, okay. and I have uh, students that I've been teaching off and on for 20 years. Wow. Yeah. That means you keep learning every day. Yeah, yeah. And so do I. Yeah. Right? Lovely. So. Uh, it's the, it's like there's so much to this medium. Like some people just do one thing their whole life, you know. But there's many different things, techniques okay. to learn. So how long have you been practicing, you know, this, this kind of field? Me, this medium. Yeah. I've been working since 1995. Wow. And uh, I took a course and went, oh, I have to know everything there is. I have to do this now in my life. But before that, I was a sculptor. So, wow. Um, that's, and this is some of your pieces you have yeah, on? Yeah, this is a, a bone locket. So a lot of my work uses bone. So wow. I can make a recess in the back of it and then turn into a locket. I like the idea of hidden. Yes. And uh, this is also a doll. A little, I call it my voodoo doll, but it's also a little bit of a self-portrait. And uh, she is also a locket. Wow, that's so, beautiful. So, yeah, and I do, a, I work with dolls a lot. I make people, like I do characters yeah. of people and for themselves out of whatever they want, bone, okay. market, diamonds. And they, uh, you do customize pieces? Yes, yeah, that's what we do a lot of here. I love jewelry, so yeah. uh, I think I'm gonna come back to see you to create something very unique for me. That would be awesome, I'd love to do that. Now, this is the... Blackboard Gallery. Blackboard Gallery. 
So you know. walk us through what you have on display here. Okay, well, so along this wall, in these eight cases, I have 13 artists who all use goldsmith techniques. Okay. But they work again, like I said, with many different mediums. Okay. Um, plastic, bone, glass, sterling silver, gold, platinum, bronze, copper, wood. Lovely. Um, in particular, we have, uh, this is our exhibition case, and this piece is made with a cactus. Oh, cactus root roots. That the, the artist found in the desert while she was there. This is a sculpture, and these are interactive jewelry sculptures. Wow by Sonia Nevin, who lives actually in Cochrane. And, and the price are very, 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 I would say good. Well, the, the thing is, is, and I was chatting with her last week about when you make this kind of work, you're not thinking, oh, will somebody buy it? You make it because there's something yes. inside of you that you want to make, because we're artists yes. first. And in Sonia's case, she was a sculptor, a glass, sculptor and she made huge pieces like huge oh. and then she started working with metal and same with me i was a ceramic sculptor i made huge pieces i made tiny pieces and then i decided to switch to metal lovely so yeah. this is um melanie archer and d fontaine's melanie actually kind of runs the blackboard gallery for me this is definitely my right hand person here in the gallery and studio. Um, okay. this and then this is, is yes. my work. A lot of bone, again, more interactive jewelry sculptures where the, the sculpture itself can be taken apart and worn wow. and uh, they're containers. And then, you know, we have Sarah Beth Carnat, wow. Sonia Nevin's jewelry work, uh, Jackie Anderson, who has been making work here in Calgary since 1973. Jazzy Garcia, a young woman from Nelson, who I knew as a child, uh, wow. and who used to work with us in the studio. And Stephanie Elderfield, who's working in the studio right now. Her sensitivity to nature is obvious in her work. And then these extraordinary um, uh, agates, landscape agates, you know, they're just uh, very, nice, very nice. interesting. And then Petra Luz from Montreal, who's actually a goldsmith from Europe, who has been working in Montreal for 25 years, and she's an extraordinary contemporary artist, as is Mel Smith, who will be our next, she's ho we're hosting her for our next exhibition. And she graduated from the um, University of the Arts, Mm. About a decade ago, and worked with the goldsmiths here in okay. Calgary, and continues to do her own work. And she's an extraordinary. Now, for for viewers who are looking for somewhere to do something unique, you know, uncommon for that special person in your life, Shanare is your go-to person. Well, or we'll put you in touch with the right person for sure. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank we'll you. be right back <laughs> on our Bada Culture Days here. Are the six pays can get what? Don't go nowhere. I'm part of the team here, as you see, as a painting instructor, and I'm going to be going inside right now to talk to some of my colleagues and then share with our audience the good things we're doing here out of Studio C. So let's go inside. Hello, so Master. speaks to me. Here are the Abara Culture Days six pays can get what? I'm here with one of the instructors here at Sea Space by the name of Pedro. How are you, Pedro? Hi, Lan Ray. It's great to see you. Thank you very much. So, uh, when did you, you know, uh, join Studio C as an instructor? I've been with the Studio C for like a year and a half now. Uh, I've done mixed media classes and the independent studio. Okay. Yeah. So, how has the experience been so far? It's been great. It's been great. Lots of um, lots of people to talk to, uh, share stories. It's a great experience. So today, what are you what are you doing here today? So we're working on a collaborative piece here. Um, it's five canvases that are 16 by 20. They're all like attached to each other, and we're creating like a mountain scenery with a lake, kind of to celebrate 
the Alberta culture. Culture days, yeah. lovely. Now, uh, what is your style of uh, work? Painting, uh, graphics. What, which area are you, you know, your specific? Which area? It's, that's really hard to answer because I really like to be like multidisciplinary. Like I sculpt, I paint, I collage. So I like to get my hands like in everything a little bit. Same here. Yes. I like to do, you know, I do painting, I do fashion, and I love doing this. Yes. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you for your Have time. Have a wonderful day. Go ahead with your work. Studio C is an award-winning collaborative art center. A studio and gallery open to the public. The center opened in 2005 and continues to innovate through art, creating inclusive culture. Studio C is an initiative of Prospect, a non-profit organization that breaks barriers to build an accessible or better workforce. Hi everybody, my name is Colin Menzies. I manage Studio C, a collaborative art center here in the C Space King Edward building. Uh, studio C is a studio and a gallery open to the public and we create inclusive culture in Calgary. What does that mean? Um, so out of our studio we hold uh, programming, classes, workshops and in the gallery we host exhibitions and in um, both services we connect many different communities and sectors, so mental health, pan disability, newcomers to Canada, LGBTQ youth, seniors, children, all of those groups access our services and um, our goal really is creating an opportunity and a platform for people to be empowered to grow and to discover their human potential. So we're super excited to be here, a, bar, a part of Alberta Culture Day, celebrating what happens in this city and in this province. I think a lot of people yeah, across Canada and around the world don't necessarily know exactly how much culture is bursting here. And uh, what we've been able to experience being tenants in the Sea Space King Edward building is a really interesting cross-section of communities. Um, and we've been going uh, for 15 years and this is our third space and I have to say it's, it's the most vibrant uh, space in terms of all the different uh, people that we get to connect with and continue creating more of that inclusivity that we are mandated for. Thank you. Thank you. Still on Mercedes Speaks to Me, the Calgary edition, here at Cispace King Edward in celebration of our border culture days. I'm here at a unique space called Assemble Workshop. And I'm here with Christy Wu, a friend of mine and a fashion designer. How are you, Christy? I'm good. How are you? So tell our audience about Assemble Workshop. Uh, so Assemble Workshop is a local designer studio. Uh, we have our shop here, and on the other side of this wall, we have our workspace and where we hold workshops. Okay. And we build our practices. So, um, all a lot of the Ryoko clothing is made here, um, and uh, a lot of uh, Anne's pieces are uh, not made here, but they're sold here locally. And uh, we hold pattern making workshops. Okay. So, how long have you been doing this here, at the C space? Uh, we've been here for three years, so the whole time. And how? The reception, the acceptance, how has it been so far? It's been pretty amazing. Um, yeah, like I, I think that a lot of the times people don't know uh, what happens in between the point of from the designer to when you uh, get a final piece. Yeah. Um, so we kind of showcase what that process is and I think people are pretty excited to see that. And then also too that we hold classes where um, sewing right now I feel like is either manufacturing or people do it all on their own. Okay. And so to be able to kind of bring people together to learn that skill okay. in one place is right. uh, it's pretty exciting for them. So apart from the regular everyday uh, work clothes, you know, do you create other kind of pieces, specialized pieces? Uh, so for myself, uh, I make urban travel attire for women. So it's uh, pieces like this, like this hood or like this uh, headband, um, and they're just made out of fabrics that are uh, performance fabrics, uh, but they're made to just look like everyday clothes. So so you can wear them on your bike, you can wear them hiking, you can wear them skiing. Um, 
but you can also just wear them to work or to the grocery store or to to here. Okay. <laughs> so this is yeah. the display rack for yeah. all the ready-made uh, clothes ready yes. to go. Yeah. So let's go to the uh, sure. workshop session and see where the actions taking place. So what do we what do we have here? Yeah. So this is uh, this is one of the work tables. Right now it's just set up for the shop. So usually I'll get fabric on a huge roll, like, or this is like this? one, but I'll get fabric on rolls like this, I'll roll it out across the table, right, and then um, I will take powder. Okay. So something like, something like this. Oh, yeah. And then take it apart. Exactly. Yeah. And I'll lay this out onto the fabric on the table, right? Something like that. And just so like it fits together as as tightly as possible to use all the fabric well. And then I'll trace it out into the fabric, cut it out. Um, and usually you'll have like 10 layers of the fabric. Okay. Cut it all out and then that will be your, your um, piece to take to the machine. Well, right there. Through the machines. So, so from manufacturing, um, I might do anywhere from like 10 to 75. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that means for each of the style of clothes that the customer wants, you have a pattern for each one. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, from the machine, it goes into the shop. That's yeah. lovely. That's amazing. So how many uh, fashion designers do you have in this space? Uh, there's three of us. So Anne is a... Uh, um, the cutter at the ballet, but she also does a lot of the eco, uh, eco printing and dyeing, um, and the upcycle pieces. And Aileen um, does home decor. Right. Uh, she also does some of the eco dyeing and um, uh, um, upcycle pieces. And yeah, and then there's myself. So. So if I want a specialized uh, jacket for winter now, how long will it take for you to make one? Uh, it depends on how involved it is, um, and a lot of people think, you know, like it, uh, from designer to finished piece, it might take like a few days or a week, yeah. but really there's a lot involved because you have to go from concept to pattern to test fabric to test fit on the customer yeah. to then um, fixing that, then your final piece. Wow. And the final fabrics, right? Sewing and depending on all the details. That so quite a long time. you might go Could between a week, three months. weeks, two months, yep. and yep. then the finished product. Yeah, yeah. Which is and you know this quality. Yeah. yeah, as a designer. So Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you so much. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back for more celebration and all festivities here at the Sea Space King Edward, the venue that we've chosen today to focus on our border culture days. Don't go nowhere. Hello once again, Still on Master Speaks to Me, the Calgary edition here at the Sea Space King Edward in celebration of our border culture days. I'm in the studio of a dear friend, Cecile Albi, you know, working in a unique way and our style is called refractionism. Let's get to meet Cecile. How are you, Cecile? Hi, how are you? <laughs> so, these are amazing works. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, tell us how long have you been working this style? Of? This style has evolved over about the past seven years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, uh, it started out with just kind of a few brush strokes and it's evolved ever since then. So why do you choose to work in this medium? Yeah. What inspired your, you know, the inspiration behind, you know, this kind of style, working with acrylic or oil? So what? Yeah, um, well, the acrylics really lend itself to the style well because I can do the overlays of color and wash and transparencies, um, which builds up a nice um, complex color palette underneath. Um, and I like um, uh, this refraction yeah. because it just allows itself uh, to um, do an abstracted version of, of landscapes and scenery. And I just absolutely love trees and nature. So. Okay. How do you come about the name? Refractionism. Refra refractionism is the word refraction combined with impressionism. Oh, that's lovely. Refractionism. Yeah, refractionism. So it's something, um, it's my signature style and something that I, I chose to um, uh, depict. And I can see all of that in your, you know, different beautiful pieces around here. Thank you. How long have you been working as an artist, as a painter? Uh, well, I've been doing visual art my whole life. 
um, started right out of high school. So as a, as a young child, I, I, I painted and did all kinds of things. And then uh, out of high school, I did a Bachelor of Fine Arts. Wow. And then specialized in advertising art, um, doing graphic design my whole life as a profession. And then seven years ago, decided to give that up and, and paint full time. So what inspires the move into Cispace? Oh, um, I was looking for something um, to uh, a kind of a community that um, I could I could be a part of that would take my work outside of my home um, because my home life inundated my my painting and mm -hmm. my painting inundated my home life. So it gave me more structure and and, and stability that way. So. And how has the experience been so far since you moved into this space? Oh, I, I love it. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's wonderful to be a part of other like-minded creatives. Mm -hmm. um, it's always stimulating. Uh, the environment brings a lot of outside people from the community into the building, which gives my work a lot more exposure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Be right back. <laughs> Thanks. Hello. Still on my city speaks to me, the Calgary edition. Here at Sea Space can get what? In celebration of our border culture days. Now in this building, one of the fun places to come is, is the Quest Theatre. Quest Theatre. Quest Theatre. <laughs> and uh, these guys are doing amazing work, especially with a focus on kids. Yeah. You know, helping them to be who they want to be, yeah. bringing out the creative side and the ideas locked up inside of them. I'm here with a lovely lady who is going to be talking to us about Chorus Theatre. That's yes, right. Hi. Hi. What's your name? It's Nikki. I'm Nikki Loach and I'm the artistic director of Quest Theatre. So walk me through Quest Theatre. What happens here? Well, we do uh, 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 performances and residencies in the school system. And we're also launching a little show called Flipperty Gibbet's Story Exhibit. Okay. This one here, which is for preschoolers age seven to uh, age three to seven. Okay. And it's playing at Sea Space uh, very, very soon. Okay. Um, and in in the show, there's a little uh, uh, light and shadow finale. Yeah. And that's what we're going. We're playing with inside here. So let's go see. Shadow and light. Let's so go. Come on and see. Let's see. Come on and see. This is very lovely. <laughs> so, yeah. okay, tell me what is going on here. Well, this is an old school overhead projector that we're sitting in front of. And um, it, we put some uh, uh, lighting gel on it. And we've got some cutout pieces. And kids like to uh, create their own scenes on it. And you can actually come into the middle and meet with someone and get, get out of here, Mr. Oh, wow. wow, this is nice. That's right. <laughs> so it's just sort of another way to play. If you get closer to the screen, your body gets very small, Whoa. or as small as I can get on this screen. Mm -hmm. And then when you go back further, you gets can become bigger. a giant. Wow. So I can I can get my hand really big and crush this. Oh. I can give you, oh, I can pet the dog. Here, come pet the dog. I'm up close. Come on, puppy. Pet How are you? Good puppy. Good puppy. Good puppy. Good puppy. <laughs> Okay, so uh, tell us, what, how long have you been doing this? I've been playing around with shadows for about 12 years. Wow. Um, yeah, and it, it's a real evolution. I got a cutting machine, which was a wow. huge advancement. Mm. So that, then I could be really precise, and if I made a mistake with a piece, I could just uh, really? recut them again. So that was a big piece. But other than that, I like using gel, and I like... Um, you know, uh, taking the pieces and making them move and create creating surprises out of them. So it's really fun. Wow. So for kids who are out there who want to be part of this theater, how what is the process of coming to become a member of the Quest Theater? Oh well, you can come to. We have uh, summer camps uh, in the summertime. We have some spring camps uh, around Easter. 
uh, and uh, we have little drop-in uh, uh, classes, PD days. Okay. Yeah. You know, when you don't have school, you can come and um, and do some of that. And here at Sea Space, uh, every other Saturday or so, we have some kind of activity that you can come and um, learn about us. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you know, because have... this space actually provides an opportunity for people to, you know to get to know the culture of the community. Yeah. You can find everything from music, dance, theater, painting workshop, yeah. goldsmiths, everything. And the really great thing about this space is that, you know, moms and little kids come in and they play together. Wow. And um, it's that kind of creating community, like uh, creating an opportunity for, for families to come and play bonding. together. Good family It's really bonding. lovely, yes, yeah. yeah. Thank so, you very much. All right, thanks. Brad right back.